Have you heard the news? Future Motion announced new one wheels. <laughs> That's right, folks. You heard it here for, uh, well, well, you heard it here. So Future Motion, company that makes the one wheel, has announced two new models of the one wheel, the Pint X and the one wheel GT. So let's start with the Pint X. Now design wise, this thing is pretty much the Pint. What's different about it is essentially they put in a bigger battery. So the Pint X gets 12 to 18 miles of range versus the Pint's six to eight. So the range has been about doubled. It also has a top speed that is two miles an hour faster than the regular Pint. So 18 miles per hour versus the regular Pint's 16 miles per hour. Why did they bother with the extra two miles per hour? Well, they tried to justify it on stage by saying like they arbitrarily decided that the ideal cruising speed was like 15 to 16 miles per hour. So now you can cruise at that without having to worry about getting pushback. But that doesn't make any sense. They did it because they could, the battery can support it. So the sticker price on the Pint X is $1,400 or 1445 if you buy it bundled with a Fender. Now, interestingly, they're still selling the Pint but they're not selling it for any cheaper. In fact, it's $100 more expensive than it was when I bought it. So I bought my pint brand new from Future Motion for $9.50 and now they're listing it at $10.50. I don't know exactly when that happened, but it's just kind of weird to see it selling for more now that they've announced a new product, Future Motion, Future Motion, come here. When you release new stuff, you can't sell the old stuff for more. That's not how any of this works. But anyways, that makes the Pint X $350 more expensive than the current listing price of the Pint and $450 more expensive than what I paid for it. So will I be selling my Pint and buying a Pint X? No, no I will not. not. You gave it away in the title. And why not? Well, because I could get pretty much the exact range of the Pint X by just upgrading to a third party battery. So there's a company called Chai Battery, Chi Battery, Chai Battery, I think it's Chai. And they sell what they call the Quart Battery for $385 plus shipping. And that would about double the range of my Pint, pretty much the same as the Pint X. Now it won't give me the extra two miles per hour top speed because the pushback threshold is like programmed into the control board. So we can't change that, but we're talking about two miles per hour. It's not that serious. And upgrading the battery would be the more economical solution. Because let's see, I paid $9.50 for my one wheel. We'll ignore the fender and the foot pad and the accessories because I'm pretty sure they would all fit on the Pint X. So in this example, let's just say I'm keeping those. One wheels hold their value decently well, but they, you know, they're certainly not an appreciating asset. I'd probably lose a couple hundred bucks. So let's say I sold it for $7.50, I'm out 200. And then I buy a Pint X for $450 more than I originally paid for my Pint. That makes me going from the Pint to the Pint X a $650 upgrade. It's just not worth that to me. I'd rather just leave the door open to upgrade the battery if I feel like I need more range. Now upgrading the battery to a third party battery does make me a little nervous because Future Motion has made it very clear that they don't appreciate third party batteries being sold. They really wish that was a market that did not exist. And so in theory, it's within the realm of possibility that they could push out a firmware upgrade that would brick my board. I don't think that will happen, but it's possible. So it would make me very nervous to open the one wheel app if I wanted to change the ride profile or something. Anyways, yeah, they said that the Pint X was available immediately, so it's being shipped right now. Okay, so then once they were done presenting the Pint X, they did the whole one more thing thing, very original. And then they showed off the big boy, the one wheel GT. They didn't say on stage why it's called the GT, but I'm assuming they're going like grand touring, like the way that cars are kind of named. But this thing has some much more substantial changes over its predecessor, the XR. So first of all, the overall design language has caught up with the direction that they took with the pint. I like it just fine. I didn't hate the design of the XR, but I do think that the GT comes across as a more polished product. So the GT uses bigger battery cells and also more of them. So they're advertising 32 miles of range on the GT versus the 12 to 18 that they advertise for the XR. So again, they're about doubling it, which is pretty impressive because the XR already had pretty good range. Goo, you think that's good? You should get the EUC by EUC and go 500 miles on a single charge. <laughs> The GT also has concave foot pads, both in the back and the front, which is a big deal because for the previous models, third parties were making concave foot pads, but only for the back because the front has the foot sensors and a concave shaped foot pad 
would mess with their sensitivity, which is not safe. But now that Future Motion themselves are doing it, they have changed the foot sensors to accommodate for the fact that the front is now concave. That's really great. I have a concave rear foot pad on my Pint, and I find it way more comfortable than the stock flat foot pad. It also gives you a little bit more leverage when you're carving and turning. So two thumbs up for concave foot pads. While we're talking about foot pads, they also mentioned that they will have an option for a high kick foot pad, meaning it's kind of like a wedge shape, so it's higher in the back than in the front, as well as a foot pad with kind of a hump in the middle of it for arch support. They keep referring to this as the love hump. Is what we call the love hump. I am so stoked on the love hump. Which is highly questionable naming. I wish they'd call it anything else. Those are extra, so it'll cost you an extra hundred bucks, and it's only for the rear foot pad. They also called out adding in grippier grip tape, which is cool, I guess. I mean, the grip tape on the Pint and the XR were kind of thin, but I never had any problems with slippage, uh, but I also don't ride off-road very much. I imagine it could be a problem if you're like getting it caked with dirt and mud and stuff. The GT also comes with a built-in Mag Handle Pro. So this was one of those awkward areas where the Pint kind of had an edge over the XR because the Pint came with that built-in Mag Handle where you could carry it sideways, kind of like a briefcase, whereas the XR did not include that. They offered it, but you had to buy it as an extra accessory. Now the XR did have an indentation in the nose so you could hold it like vertically, which is good, but for carrying it like a longer distance, you'd really wanna have the handle. And now that I think about it, they didn't specifically say that they kept the indentation on the nose. It really needs both. So hopefully that's the case and you can carry it either way. It's also nice that they went with the Mag Handle Pro. That one's made of aluminum and has kind of a rubberized grip to it, so it's a little bit more comfortable to hold. I have heard complaints about the standard plastic Mag Handle that comes on the pint breaking. I haven't had that problem. Mine is holding up just fine, but that is something that I've heard as being a problem. So definitely nice that this one's gonna be aluminum. Now, one downside to the GT is the weight. It is 35 pounds over the 27 pounds of the already heavy XR. So this is definitely not a machine that you're gonna wanna lug around if you're planning on like riding it to the store or something. I think you're gonna have to find a way to lock it up. Okay, now the tire. So they said that they're keeping the width of the tire that was on the XR, but they're giving it a much more rounded profile like we have on the Pint. So hopefully that equates to the best of both worlds. A lot of stability when you're just going straight and a lot of carvability when you're leaning and turning. We'll see, these are not shipping yet, so how that tire actually feels is yet to be determined, but it sounds nice. They also have a treaded tire option for the GT now versus the standard slick, but if you do want treaded, it's gonna cost you an extra 50 bucks. Hopefully people like this tire because there's a lot riding on it. But no, seriously, from what I understand, this is not going to be a standard sized go-kart tire, which is what the Pint and the XR used, meaning there will be much fewer options if you want to swap out the tire for something custom. Maybe third parties will start building, you know, these custom sized tires for one wheels, but maybe not. And we at least know that for the, you know, initial launch period, there's not gonna be any options for third party tires. It doesn't bother me personally, cause I'm not really interested in swapping the tire out on a one wheel, but I know for a lot of people, that's a big deal. During this presentation, Feature Motion took another page out of Apple's book and showed a very arbitrary chart. You see it's better because this line is higher than that line. In any case, it sounds like this board will have more voltage and provide more torque, and it should therefore be able to handle off-road situations even better than the XR did. Now, as far as speed, the GT has a listed top speed of 20 miles per hour versus the XR's listed top speed of 19 miles per hour. So basically no change there which doesn't bother me, I'm not really in it for speed, but the fact that they kept it at 20 kind of implies to me that there's some sort of cap at 20, either for regulatory reasons or because they're just trying to limit their exposure to lawsuits from people getting hurt on these things, which is understandable. The GT also has brighter LEDs than the XR, which is great because the lights on the XR are not super bright and the lights on the Pint are pretty pitiful. So hopefully these lights will actually serve to help you as the rider see further out in front of you. The XR's lights could help a little bit with that, but really for the most part, they were more helpful for being seen versus seeing yourself. All right, now the price. So the GT is going for $2,200 or $2,245 if you bundle it with the Fender, which is a lot of money, but it's also a $400 jump from the XR, which is similar to the jump from the Pint to the Pint X. If you're comparing it to the 950 price that I paid for my Pint, the Pint X was $450 more expensive than the Pint. 
So this is actually a less expensive upgrade and it's a better upgrade in my opinion, like a substantially better upgrade. There's, there's way more different about it. So the GT, the GT is interesting to me. Am I going to go ahead and upgrade? No, no not, not yet. yet in the title. Why not? Well, a few reasons. First of all, we are going into the winter season as I film this, and over the winter, I anticipate I'll be riding the one wheel a lot less. Oh, you live in Atlanta, dude. You think that's cold? You should feel how cold it is over where I live in Herpa Shut up, shut up. Second, these things aren't shipping yet as I record this. People who are ordering them, I'm hearing, are getting shipping dates in like January, February. And we'll see if that holds up. I mean, it could even get delayed. So before I spend that kind of money, I'd really like to hear more from people who have already ridden one and hopefully even ride one myself. As soon as Suprents get some in their inventory, I will gladly rent one. And once that happens, I do plan to make a video about it. And the last reason is that it's a lot of money. I've got other things that I'd like to spend my money on right now, and I'm still super happy with my pint. I still ride it frequently. I still have a great time while doing it. For where I live and what I use it for, the range on the battery hasn't really been a big deal. I've invested into accessories for it that make it more comfortable to ride. And I mean, I like it, I'm happy with it. I, I don't feel any huge deficiency that I need to fill immediately. That said, I could see myself with the GT one of these days. Oh, by the way, one more thing. I would really love to make a video about learning to ride an electric unicycle. The problem is they're pretty expensive and I don't really like want one long term. I just want to make a video about learning to ride it and you can't really rent them anywhere. So if you live in the Atlanta area and you have an old, already beat up electric unicycle that you don't mind me learning to ride on, please hit me up in the comments and let me know. Anyways, that's all I got for today. Be sure to hit like if you liked the video and found it valuable. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't done that already. Hit that bell icon so that YouTube notifies you anytime I upload a new video. We're growing, we're getting there, we're growing a little bit, but this is still a very new YouTube channel and I could really use your help getting it off the ground. Appreciate it. Peace.